Okay. Hi, everybody. Welcome back. Uh, we, uh, as I said last time, we're going to start with this slide and we're going to go into more of the clinical frameworks now, but I actually want to go back a step because I've put another couple of slides in, which I think will make things a lot clearer. Um, we're going to approach it like this. We're going to go broad, then we're going to go narrow down, then we're going to go broad again. So broad is what are we trying to achieve with rehabilitation? Um, how can we achieve this? Then we're going to go really narrow into some of the isometric and isotonic progressions. Uh, then we're going to go uh, structural rehab blocks. So how do we structure our rehab at different times? Uh, then we're going to go exercise scheduling, okay? And this is the framework that we're going to apply when we then go into all the sites and start thinking about rehab there. So the first point is to think about what are we actually trying to achieve? So we want to build capacity in the system, uh, build capacity in the system and tendon stiffness. This is, this is the first block and it's not, well, it's not a block because we're not doing it. We're not, do, we're not going from here to here to here. As you'll see in a second, it's all in, integrated. But uh, when we're building capacity in the system, we're doing things like teaching people the right movement patterns. We're doing things like isometric loading to develop uh, uh, stiff tendons, but also not only that, to develop strength in various uh, specific ranges. We're doing things like building uh, strength capacity, um, and that could be isotonic work. I've written 6RM there, um, which is which is uh, one of the rep ranges that we use a lot, you'll see throughout the course, but it doesn't have to be that. It can be obviously modified for different people. Uh, maximal eccentric work. Uh, this is also in this part here, okay? In blue, in the brackets, what I've got is some of the ways that we can assess these qualities. So obviously with technique, we look at people, we see how they move, we can take videos um, with um, uh, isometrics. Uh, if you're targeting tendon, uh, you can get a little bit more fancy and start looking at how much is the tendon actually straining? We do that in a rehab setting. We don't, sorry, we do that in a, in a lab uh, research setting, but we don't yet do that uh, as part of our rehab. This is just too difficult, okay? Um, uh, in terms of our uh, capacity building via isotonics and eccentrics, we can look at uh, monitoring MVIC and various multiple RMs over time, okay? The next part that we want to do is we want to, we've now built capacity in the system. We want to be able to allow the system to move freely and with confidence. So we're now building uh, force generation and absorption. So this is where uh, we teach people to land, to stop, to decelerate with various drills. Uh, we teach people how to express concentric force quickly um, and uh, this could involve various um, uh, extensions of some of the stuff that we've already looked at or that we're going to look at in, in the sites. And that is just doing some of the more applied activities with a faster concentric intent. Um, or it could be doing things like uh, jumping and other ways to express concentric force. Okay. Um, so here we can also measure some outcomes. So for example, looking at how they're landing, looking at their specific landing technique, um, uh, we can look at that with video or we can assess them. Um, we can assess them uh, with, um, uh, I was going to say 3D motion, but that's probably, uh, let's leave that. That's a little bit too complex here. Uh, usually 2D video, just your coach's eye and observing people. Uh, in terms of concentric intent, um, we can, and we're going to talk about this more when we go into module 11, which is stretch, short, and cycle. But um, I like to measure how high uh, someone can jump onto a box with single leg, which I think is a good measure of concentric power. The other one is um, you can do things like jumping forwards and landing um, distance. You can do things like you can also get a little bit more fancy and measure velocity. There are apps that do it. I've got a linear encoder, which I'm going to show you some slides about later on in the clinic, which we can measure concentric force uh, and the velocity, particularly, uh, that people can 
can um, travel in the concentric phase, which is uh, a, an important outcome. So that's that's one way of doing it. Okay. If you don't have this equipment um, in the clinic, don't worry about it. Okay. You can still do a lot of this rehab really well by just observing people and measuring the basics. Um, the last thing we're trying to do. So now we've developed confidence, the ability to produce force quickly, the ability to move and land and, and absorb forces through the required ranges of motion with confidence. Now we want to express uh, stretch shorten cycle and we want to um, uh, we want to be able to develop uh, the ability of the tendon to store en uh, engine to store um, uh, elastic energy and uh, I guess behave like an engine where it um, but better than an engine because it doesn't need to be fueled it's all passive so passive energy into the tendon expressing that and allowing us to be more powerful. So that is um, now stretch shorten cycle and tendon compliance. Now, the reason I put tendon compliance here, the tendon's actually stiff because you've now got a really strong muscle, you've got a really stiff tendon, but you can actually harness the compliance from the tendon because you're so strong, because you've done all this stuff here. And now this is really powerful because you're going to be more efficient. You're going to be better at running. You're going to be better at jumping, uh, cutting, change direction, because you have developed that strength and that ability in the tendons, okay? Uh, so, ply, so, so this is where we do plyometric hops and pogos, uh, specific jumping, cutting, and gait drills, depending on the individual. Um, and this is also where we do running sessions, okay? Um, so this is all stretch, shorten, cycle. Now, again, it's not do this, do this, then do this. You'll see that in a second. It's much more integrated than that, okay? Now, as outcomes here, we can look at things like uh, drop jumps, um, 5, 10 uh, hopping, and I usually do that at 132 beats per minute, as we'll talk about in module 11. Uh, we can also look at things like uh, for jumping, uh, triple hop distance. We can look at uh, single leg counter movement jump. That's about it. I don't get too fancy with uh, a lot of the other stuff. That's probably all I would do. But I would look at someone cutting and observe their technique, um, uh, provide feedback about their technique, maybe also use video in doing that. And that is something we'll look at again in module 11 in a bit more detail. Okay. So here we're just talking about the basic blocks, the basic qualities that we're going to be training. We're going to go for capacity and stiffness, uh, force generation, absorption, and then stretch, shorten, cycle. Okay. And with running, obviously, you can look at things like volume and um, high-speed running distance. Okay. So um, this is now getting a little bit more into the details. So now we're going to talk about how can we actually achieve uh, these different things. Um, what we do is we break things up into levels. And the reason for that is level one is things that people can start pretty much um, straight away, uh, depending on their symptoms. Level two is things that require some level of capacity, which we're, I mean, this is, this is not just capacity. You can see this plyo prep here, um, which would be uh, part of these uh, these qualities. Um, so this is where the integration comes in, okay? This is all capacity building. Um, ISOT, maxi-centric, that's all capacity building. Uh, but you've also got plyometric prep here, which is here. That's all your force generation absorption. And then you've also got plyo, which is, oops, which is here, okay? So you can see how integrated this is. Um, uh, but again, you don't go from one to two to three. You, I'll show you that in a second. You integrate even further into blocks, which I'll show you, uh, which I'll show you um, as I say. But let's just go through this. These are level one activities. So these are the, the least provocative, least likely to cause issues. Level two, you need a certain level of level one before you get to level two. Okay, so you need to achieve isotonic and isometric targets, or at least getting close to them. Um, level three, well, you need to have done a bit of level one, and you need to have done at least some plyo prep 
to get to plyometric, okay? So this is where competence with plyo prep is required. So there's no real strength targets to go from two to three, but it's just making sure you're confident to move. Um, so what do we have in these uh, levels? We have isometric hold in the inner range. Remember, that's going to be the least likely to stress the tendon, the least provocative. We can progress to mid-range. We've got isotonic patterning, so teaching people to move. As you'll see, I use the metronome a lot for this, not so much for uh, anything else, but just to slow things down and focus them on the movement and the actual technique and skill. Um, isotonic capacity. Um, I also use the metronome here for most people. Um, expressive technique is still an issue. Um, and then we've got uh, isometric push, which we can bring in, in this phase. And that's, uh, and that's uh, mid range to, you could nudge into some outer range. Um, you're still building capacity, but you're starting to now um, activate the nervous system yourself. You're pushing instead of holding, okay? We'll talk more about these uh, dosages for each of these in a second. And then you've got plyometric prep. Um, so for plyometric prep, uh, what we do here is um, we're doing things that are non-impact. So these are non-impact hip drills, like um, they could be marches, they could be, um, you know, hip drives, they could be non-impact ankle drills, like walking on toes, walking on heels, heel to toe walking, toe taps. So things that we can start that's going to help them with plyometric activity, um, it's going to help them with their movements, but it's non-provocative and that's why it's level one, okay? Then we go to level two. So level two is uh, building on some of the level one. So here we start doing isotonic intent. So this is moving as quickly as they can in the concentric phase. So you can see here the tempo is less than one second for concentric, no pause, and three seconds for eccentric. Okay, now you, you have to have some of this under your belt. You have to be reaching your capacity targets before you can express force quickly or at least have the intent to do that. Okay, um, and then the max eccentric is. Um, also requiring some of this before they start it. Uh, now this is no concentric phase. You go up with two legs and then you go slowly down for six seconds. Okay, we'll talk more about dosage as I said. Um, I also put in here isometrics in what I call risky but relevant positions. Um, and this is, uh, you can add intent to these as well. Um, this is designed to express force in positions that maximally load the tendon and also to, to provide load for different parts of the tendon, as we'll see in a second. Um, so we try and modify and vary the positions that we do these in, okay? Um, and then here we also progress in level two plyo prep. So this is where they're starting to do some uh, plyometric, I guess you could call activities, like they might be starting to absorb, force generate, um, to do even some submaximal hopping. Uh, they're a very low intensity double leg, things like that. Um, you know, they might be doing um, they might be doing uh, cutting, um, and they might be doing um, gate drills that are more progressed, like skips. Okay, and when I say cutting, I mean low intensity, just learning the technique to start with. Okay, the pattern. Um, so this can start earlier. This can this can be continued up here because one of the things that I find is that getting them to their capacity targets of isometric and isotonic can take a long time. So whilst you're still achieving these, you can bring in the running and the plyo prep. Okay. Um, so this is why I say achieve isot and is ison targets. Uh, well, I haven't said it there, but what I what I usually say is when they're uh, approaching uh, their targets is a better way to say it, okay? Uh, because we don't want to delay the introduction of some of this very important groundwork, okay? Um, so this is what I mean. It's all very integrated. Then you've got uh, plyometric work, uh, and here we're doing maximal 
efforts, we're starting to progress to maximal pogos, double and single leg. Uh, we can do repeated jumping, which we'll see. Uh, we're starting to increase the intent and force with things like cutting. And we're starting to do maximal gait drills, which we'll also have a quick look at when we go into module 11. Um, and here we can also start to uh, do high speed running. So I, I think you do need to make sure you've got the strength targets ticked well and truly before you do maximal uh, activities here. Okay, so this needs to be achieved. This is the bedrock of everything. It needs to be achieved before you do the maximal activities. Okay, uh, but not so much with these ones. These can be more integrative. Rightio. So.